Welcome back everybody. I'm Professor Rhett Smith for the ProtonGuru.com. Today we're going to continue our discussion of electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions with lesson 4.8. As I mentioned in our previous lesson, a lot of learning about new variations of electrophilic aromatic substitution really just has to do with figuring out how the new electrophile is generated to put a particular group onto the benzene ring. Now, for example, if you take nitric acid and sulfuric acid as your reagents, say, well, these are two acids, and what really happens is the stronger acid, sulfuric acid, protonates an OH group on the nitric acid. This is very much like when you have an OH group on an alcohol, and you had a strong acid that protonates the OH. So we've seen this type of reaction before for alcohols. So the species we get is the O2N with the OH group that's been protonated by the strong acid. Well, now you've got a positive charge on the oxygen. That is not very favorable. You're going to actually dump the electrons from the NO bond to the oxygen to lose water. Again, very, very similar to what we saw with alcohols. Once you protonate the OH on alcohol, very frequently it leaves as water. Well, what happens to this NO2 group that's left behind? Well, let's draw out its Lewis dot structure and say, okay, we have O, O, if we give everything an octet, we can make an octet satisfied species, but the nitrogen in the middle has a positive charge on it. So it's a nitro group, NO2, and you add this IUM ending, nitronium ion, to tell you it's cationic. Well, now that nitrogen has a plus one charge, and that atom, the nitrogen, will then attract the electrons, but the nitrogen can't have five bonds. It can't have more than an octet. So we have to dump a pair of electrons onto the oxygen. That's fine. Now what do we get when we do that? Well, this double bond is gone, but we haven't taken any protons off, so I've drawn both protons in on the two carbons involved in that double bond. We've made a new bond to the nitrogen. We've pushed some electrons onto the O, and we have a double bond O still. So this carbon is left with only three bonds. It's cationic. That's the electrophilic addition step that all the electrophilic aromatic substitution processes show. We know the second step is electrophilic elimination, and you're going to eliminate the H from the carbon that has four bonds to reestablish that double bond so you now have regained your aromatic stability. The net result is that the NO2 group has substituted for one of the hydrogens. This nitro group is what we first introduced in our nomenclature of monosubstitute benzene lessons. Well, you can also leave out the nitric acid and use sulfuric acid. And the mechanism by which you generate your electrophile is really the same as we saw for the nitric acid. One of the sulfuric acid molecules with its OH group becomes protonated. So we have this HO3S with the OHH positive on O. Well, that's a great leaving group because it will leave as water. If you're heating your reaction, you can actually boil the water away and it will go into the vapor phase. Well, this leaves you with an HO3S cation. Well, what does that look like if we draw out its Lewis dot structure? Well, the sulfur has two oxygens like this. There's still one H left, so there's an OH over here. And the sulfur is the atom with the plus charge. That's important to do to draw out that Lewis dot structure to figure out which atom will be attracted to the pi bond electrons of the benzene so that we know where this group attaches to the benzene ring. So we do the electrophilic addition step, and I'll just draw it out as SO3H at that point. We've gotten rid of the double bond, we've made our carbocation intermediate, but we haven't gotten rid of this H yet until the electrophilic elimination step. So now we do electrophilic elimination, and the net result is that you've taken your benzene and replaced the H with the SO3H group. This is called a sulfonation reaction, and you've made a sulfonic acid. Now this is not the only way that you can get an SO3H group to add on to a benzene ring. You can also do this reaction with a mixture of SO3 and sulfuric acid. Now it happens when you mix these two compounds together that some visible fumes can come off of this mixture. So this is referred to as fuming sulfuric acid. So if someone was to give you a reaction arrow and they just wrote fuming sulfuric acid here, I hope you'd recognize that that mixture of SO3 and sulfuric acid is what they are referring to. 
Now, the SO3H sulfonic acid functional group can still be put on the benzene ring when you use these. So how does that happen? Well, of course, sulfuric acid, being a very strong acid, will want to protonate the best available site. So that's an oxygen lone pair attracted to that H. And that, of course, will dissociate the proton from the sulfuric acid structure because you can't make two bonds to a hydrogen. Now, the sulfur in the middle here, as that's happening, is already very, very, very positive because of these three oxygens yanking electron density away from the sulfur. So while that's happening, you can have the pi bond of the benzene attracted to that S electrophilic site. What will that give us in box A? Well, it turns out to be the same intermediate species we saw when we used just sulfuric acid to generate this species. And then, of course, once that carbocation forms, no matter how it was formed in the first place, you do the electrophilic elimination to finish out your electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. You have the SO3H, so O123, so SO3H, and you've got your benzene sulfonic acid again. One thing I want to point out about the classic sulfonation reaction with the sulfuric acid, if we look back at its structure, we see in this step that we lose water when we generate the electrophile. And you'll see, I didn't mention on this page, but I've indicated that each of these steps is reversible. So if we wanted to take benzene sulfonic acid and make benzene from it by pulling the sulfonic acid group off again. I would add some water with the sulfuric acid and heat this up and I could get back to benzene. So the other electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions I talked about are less reversible than this. This is the most reversible of the ones we're going to talk about. But just keep in mind that the presence of water in this reaction will help push the reaction back to the benzene. So you really want to do this reaction with no water possible using concentrated sulfuric acid if your goal is to make the sulfonic acid and not have a bunch of benzene left behind.